this morning or back here this afternoon. For those of you who were not there uh, this morning, I'd like to thank Jamalto for the lunch uh, at noon today, excellent lunch as usual, and a good networking event. I'd like to again take the opportunity to thank SIGPA for the reception last night. I think many, of, most of you must have been there. We had a good time. That music was fantastic, wasn't it? With the harp, with the, I think it was a harp. Yes, let's have a hand of applause for the musicians. <laughs> Terrific. <laughs> and I'm told that we should expect something like that this evening. Not the same musicians, but I would heartily suggest that we all attend the reception this evening. It should be another winner. Before we get underway, just a few housekeeping items. The new Trip magazine is out. You've seen it on your desks, probably. We will be replenishing the table at the back of the hall, so those of you who have not seen your Trip magazine, there will be additional copies at the back. Take one, not too many, because we want to make sure everyone has the magazine, but it will be out there this afternoon. A quick review of the process for questions. Of course, you can send your questions uh, during a presentation using the email address, and also at the end of the sessions, we will be looking at the hall to see if anyone has a question. Process, very simple again. You press the button on your microphone and please raise your hands quite high so we can locate you from the stage. We now continue with our overview of the before departure component of our travel cycle with a focus on operational experience and potential solutions in dealing with fraud as it relates to travel documents. Our moderator for the session is Mr. Joel Slotnick. Joel is a supervisory physical scientist employed by the U.S. Department of State in the Bureau of Consular Affairs, Counterfeit Deterrence, Deference, Deterrence, yes, that sounds good, Deterrence Laboratory. His current work involves research in security artwork and design techniques in security printing. He is also an instructor on counterfeit detection at the U.S. Department of State Foreign Service Institute and has held positions at the Homeland Security Investigations and U.S. Secret Service Forensic Laboratories. So Joel, we're looking forward to quite an exciting, I would gather, session this afternoon, right? Yes. The floor is yours. Okay, good afternoon. Hello. Hi, I'm Joel. I'm here to introduce our next session, which is, uh, of course, going to be fun because it's going to be about documents, right? The name of the session, the title of the session is ICAO MRTD Standards and Specifications, How ICAO Trip Strategy Can Help Combat the Latest Trends in Fraudulent Documents. So the ICAO TRIP strategy has a number of different pillars or facets that all have to work together in order for documents to be effective. And these are solid evidence of identity, the presence and use of machine-readable travel documents, the presence of document issuance and control systems, as well as effective inspection systems and tools and interoperable applications in order to make all of these things work together. So today, to talk a little bit more about how these things interface with the document paradigm, we have a number of speakers here that will speak to you about new document designs, capacity building, and document fraud trends within the EU and within physical documents. Uh, before we do that, I would like to... Uh, I would like to uh, say a few words about a program that the Department of State has launched uh, about e-learning for counterfeit detection. Uh, two bureaus of the Department of State, which is my employer in the US, have assembled a e-learning program on different security feature technologies. Uh, it's our goal to make this available as widely as possible, not just to Department of State audiences, but also to audiences here and worldwide. So this is uh, not something that there is a fee for. Uh, if you're interested in talking to me a little bit more about that, I'll have my email address on the next slide. For now, just a little summary. This is a distance learning program. It can be delivered over the internet or it can be delivered on a DVD disc. 
Our average users are saying it takes about to eight to 10 hours to complete this, so it's a very thorough primer on security feature technologies. And it's designed not to be document specific, so it's not about US documents only, it's about document technologies that are used in documents of all types from issuers worldwide, right? This is free again, and if you have an interest in hearing more about this, I've got my email address up on the slide right now. I'd like to uh, introduce our first speaker, all right? His name is Dustin Degoev. A little bit of background on him. In 2014, he began working at the State Registration Service of the Republic of Kyrgyzstan. From 2014 to 17, he worked as Deputy Chairman of the SRS, and in June 2017 was appointed as the Chairman of the State Registration Service. He's responsible for overall reform and modernization products at SRS. He holds a bachelor's degree in business administration obtained at the Kingston University in London and a master's degree in public administration from the Kyrgyz University. Mr. Degov will be presenting on how the Kyrgyz Republic is on the road to secure international travel document management. The floor is yours. Good afternoon, dear ladies and gentlemen. First of all, let me express my gratitude to organizers for inviting to attend 13th symposium and exhibition on the ICAO trade program, and to share with our achievements related to the new generation of the travel documents. My name is Dastan Dogoev. I am the chairman of the state registration service under the government of the Kyrgyz Republic. Our service agency has been formed as a result of the reform in the state registration system in 2009. As a result of this reform, my agency is responsible for the population register and issuing relevant identification documents for the transport registration and issuing of the driver identification documents for the maintaining of the land, cadastre and property registration. And it's also all about the issuing the property related documents. Also, we are responsible for the maintaining and development of the state archive of my country. As you can see, most of the state registration functions are under the one agency. I think it's the, it is one of the advantages that we can implement the reforms and projects related to the IT or uh, introducing innovative technology in our agency. My country is a member, has become a member of the ICAO since in 1999. And most of the work from, from the side of my country was focused on the secure civil aviation only. So it's all about the civil aviation, security of the airport, and the passenger related processes. For the first time, the officials from my service attended symposium organized by ICAO in 2014. And this was the first time we learned about the trade program. This is important to mention that that trip in 2014 was organized and funded by the local office of OEC in Kyrgyzstan. Uh, after that uh, trip to Montreal in 2014, we have, uh, uh, we have reviewed and come up with the, our five-year midterm action plan in order to shift to the next generation of travel documents, in order to build robust identification management, identity management system. Oh, I forgot about the slides, actually. Sorry. So as you can see on this slide, uh, we have the first generation of MRTDs. So the ID format, ID1, it's the, they have been launched in 2005. And it's also the travel document to uh, it's used as a travel document to Russia, Russia Federation and to Kazakhstan. And uh, also uh, in fir May 1st, 2017, we have shifted to the new generation of ID documents. It's EMRTD, and uh, it's uh, compliant with ICAO uh, document 9303. And on the right-hand side, you can see the 
passports. We issue passports to our citizens, and also we have diplomatic and service types of this document. And next year we are planning to move to the e-passports. So when we are developing our action plan, we had to face such a problems, and most of the reason was because we had old paper-based registration system. And it's summed up with the data inconsistency, identification document fraud. So uh, there was a number of cases when uh, the third gr uh, group of people, they used our documents and then they uh, counterfeit them in order tr to travel to other countries. For example, in order to obtain Russian citizenship or either to travel to, where it's very easy to get visas to uh, attend Hajj. It's a religion, like religious uh, Islamic tour. Uh, another problem we faced, it was high level of corruption. For example, it was easy to get birth certificate and legally get the travel document. Uh, and of course, it summed up is, with the poor quality of services and the low level of trust. <laughs> and in 2014, the management of our country uh, approved a special action plan, which was uh, tasked to develop and implement a uh, unified population register. This system would in integrate the following registration systems. Civil status registration information system, passport system, address registration system, and we have introduced in 2014 biometric data, data in registration system. Uh, and the, one of the other components of the system was citizenship data registration system. This is the system about those who are obtaining our citizenship and about those who are obtaining, for example, other citizenship and refusing from Kyrgyz citizenship. All these systems integrated via a single window identifier, which is assigned to each citizen since birth registration. Now in our database, we have 5.9 unique entries about our citizens. And 3,164,000 of, of them, they have gone through biometric reg registration process. Um, I've lost one of my slides. Anyway, I want to show the architecture. Ah. So this is the architecture, like very functional architecture of the system. As you can see on the lower side, this is the components of the unified population register. And the pin is uh, used as a single window identifier. Now the system also used for the e-services. It's connected to the interagency interaction system. So for example, the Ministry of Internal Affairs or the Border Control Agency, they can use also the information about from uh, the systems. One of the key components of the population register we have created so-called register about the status of the document. It's something like the database on the Interpol database related to the lost, stolen, and revoked documents. It was important to implement such a system because we had those counterfeit documents, such as birth certificates and uh, national ID cards. Uh, and uh, excuse me. As you can see on this slide, uh, this is the new business process model. On the enrollment stage, we verify each biographic data. And if it's first time this applicant applying for the document, we collect the biometric data. It's 10 fingerprints, photo, and digital signature. If it's renewable, then we verify using the two fingerprints and we uh, verify uh, this application form against our database. Also, we have a special watch list matching. So this is uh, those people who, are, who has debt, for example, in tax. So the, our uh, operators or the responsible person, they also communicate this information to the relevant police department. 
And then it, this application form, in electronic way, goes to the back office. The back office takes the decision about the, each application form. If the application form is at, uh, approved, then it's verified by digital signature of the responsible person and goes to, uh, for the personalization of the document. At the personal center, it's important to mention that we have created the new passport system and the, the government of the Korea and Japan, they helped us. So we have not spent even a penny from our state budget. So it was fully donor-funded project. It's also important, the, I think the, our project was unique because the PERSO system and the ID blank cards, they were provided by Korean side. Equipment was funded by EU funds and we have bought it from China. And the enrollment system was in-house de uh, developed uh, software. So we somehow managed to integrate all of the solutions and now, we, I mean, since May, we have issued more than 324,000 EIDs. Uh, actually, this project was implemented within the eight months, and we faced lots of problems between two vendors, because they were blaming each other because of the, some problems and in terms of the integrating these solutions. So this is our EID. On the EID, we have uh, the basic biographic data. Uh, we use the laser engraving technology. It's important to mention that uh, since 2015, we have adopted new election system. It's based on the biometric identification of the identity of the water on the election day. We use the fingerprints, and for the elections in 2017, we use the face recognition system as well, because we have faced some cases where the water cannot identify themselves based on their fingerprints. And uh, we have adopted new functionality, which is about the face recognition. Our EID also used as a key to, in order to get e-services in an online mode. And it's also travel document to Russian Federation and, Kaz and Kazakhstan. We have used most of the popular security elements, such as tacti tactile features, microtext, OVI, MLI, embedded hologram. And as I mentioned, for the last, since we have launched the system, we have uh, issued 324,000 EIDs. Mm. Once we have moved and uh, digitalized lots of personal data <laughs> related to our citizens, we have faced lots of problems with data inconsistency. We have used, as I mentioned before, personal identification number. And uh, there was a case when one person could have several PIN numbers, or two persons can have one uh, PIN number. In order to deal with such cases, we have created special department. This department is responsible for the taking decisions related to the identity issues. Uh, and uh, based, on, uh, based on this, of course, there would be a human factor. They could make wrong decisions as well. And we come up with a special risk management like mechanism. Our specialists, they have come up with nine risk scenarios. It's all about the, each applic uh, application form uh, gets verified against all database that we have at the moment. And based on that verification, verification, the system uh, uh, assigns special color, red, orange, or green. Based on that color, the color indicator, the responsible person should take actions. Mm, and I'm just, I just want to show about the new, our concept design, I, actually my time's up. So just a few seconds. This is the new concept design of our uh, e-passport. And this design has been encouraged, by the way, the work by Delarue. We try to use most of their like, and recommendations. So. Mo this is just to show, and we are planning to implement this project next year in 2018. This is just for your review. Yeah. So we, the, the base, uh, basic concept of our e-passport design was related to the regions of our country, and to use the traditional, historical, and the uh, natural, uh, authentic things of our country. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. 
So thank you very much to our speaker for uh, describing a rollout of a new document style and a new document design, a transition from an older non-biometric document to a new electronic document. Uh, to contrast that, our next set of speakers will be uh, David Sterland and Nelson Goncalves, who will talk a little bit about partnership between IOM and ICAO. Let me read their bios for you first before I invite them up. Uh, David Sterling has been working in the air transport industry since 1988, specializing in aviation security and facilitation since 1999. He held management roles with British Airways, the UK Department for Transport, and airport operator BAA. He joined ICAO in 2011 and has held aviation security and facilitation roles in headquarters and the Middle East Regional Office in Cairo. David assumed the role of Technical Officer, ICAO Traveler Identification Program in February 2016. And his co-presenter is Mr. Nelson Goncalves. Uh, Mr. Goncalves joined the Portuguese Immigration and Border Service in 1990 and became a qualified expert in document examination in 1999. He has participated in a large number of projects, including the Portuguese MRTD and EMRTT projects, border management system, and automated border control system. He's the Portuguese representative for several EU and international working groups and has been collaborating with IOM since 2011. He's currently based in Moshi, Tanzania, as a trainer at the African Capacity Building Center. Gentlemen, the floor is yours. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to talk very briefly, just give you the overview of the uh, work between ICAO and IOM at the kind of higher level, as it were, um, and then I'm going to give the floor to Nelson pretty rapidly because he's the guy in the front line who's actually delivering technical support in, uh, in, uh, in the field. Okay. So just a quick outline of uh, what I'm going to go across. So uh, just touching on the fundamentals of the uh, agreement between our two organizations as to how we'll work together, uh, what are our objectives in doing that, and talk a little bit about the joint activities that we already have going on uh, around security documents and uh, fraud detection, training, capacity building, uh, the uh, support that IOM gives to uh, the work of ICAO in the areas of uh, the MRTD program and TRIP, uh, technical assessments, and so on. So last year, actually, at this symposium, we uh, finalized a memorandum of understanding between IOM, International Organization for Migration, and ICAO. And this was really recognizing the close connection between aviation, migration, border management, and facilitation. It's around cooperating to enhance mobility and also traveler identity management, and that's at the core of the, uh, of the trip work. And travel facilitation, including the security of travel documents, so the core of, uh, of what we've been doing for some time here. Really uh, an opportunity, I guess, at the strategic level to, uh, to intensify how we work on the TRIP program, uh, covering our own mandate as ICAO around the Chicago Convention and the annexes and standards and recommended practices and specs that come out of the work that we do here with many people in this room. And then uh, recognizing the very complementary nature of uh, the different roles of ICAO and IOM. And so IOM's operational project management capabilities in the field around the world, their link with donors, their technical expertise on border and identification management. So it was a synergy. Where are we working? As I've said, security facilitation, our Annex is 9 and Annex is 17 of ICAO. Increasingly, this understanding that aviation security and facilitation work more and more closely, that traveler identification and border security are key parts of that. Mobility of migrants I've touched on, refugees, stateless persons, work that we've already been uh, doing for some time. And then other areas, travel health assistance, pandemic management, and so on. How do we support states with regard to travel documents and border and identity management challenges? So working together on those things. Things you'd have heard uh, quite a lot about yesterday, the passenger data exchange, API, and so on, promoting data-driven security, risk-based security, as you'll hear people saying, 
Um, and then really going after this objective of how we can align, uh, enhance facilitation, border security, identity management, and I'd, and I'd add on aviation security there. And my last slide before I hand over to Nelson, really just headlines in terms of areas of cooperation where we've already been doing stuff together. Joint training on travel document inspection, this is for Nelson. Uh, sharing and development of instructors, which is work that's ongoing. Uh, developing joint training programs around travel document inspection. Our own guide is IKEA, working with stakeholders on border control management, the trip compendium that you have uh, got in front of you now, and also joint technical assistant, uh, assistance missions in, uh, in the Caribbean region. Thanks for listening, and I'll now hand over to Nelson. Good afternoon, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, um, it's a pleasure to be here again after 10 years, and I'd like to uh, um, thank ICAO for this um, invitation. So, as, um, as David was saying, um, I'm from IOM. For those of you who are not paying attention, uh, IOM is not, in my thinking, it's a maritime organization. No, it's not. It's IOM. It's an international organization for migration, and we are, we are since September 2016, uh, the United Nations Migration Agency. You can have a lot of uh, information on the slides. I promise I'm going to talk slow. Okay, sorry. And uh, we, what we do is we assist in meeting growing operational challenges on migration, advancing um, understanding migration issues, encouraging and upholding. So this is uh, our uh, core uh, business, and uh, <clears throat> on border management and together with IQ and other international organizations, we aim to um, assist member states to implement the trip, um, the trip um, strategy and, and, of course, enhance facilitation and uh, security by delivering a lot of other trainings and uh, manuals and training manuals and, um, and workshops, which we're going to talk uh, later on. This is something that um, David already covered, so I'm not going to lose um, more time and information. He did it very well. I can do it better, that's for sure. And uh, so what we do in uh, IOM uh, involvement with uh, ICAO. So what we do normally is uh, we go some areas that we cover, I would like to say, is MTD procurement, like passports and visas, ID cards, and so on and so forth. Evidence of identity, we'll go, we're going back to the the five pillars of uh, the trip strategy, of course. The PKD promotion is something we do our, during our trainings and our workshops together with our member states because, again, we are an agency that we are a strong um, footprint on the, on the field. Um, we train board officials in travel doc examinations, for example, and we just launched uh, in the end of last year um, a training manual. We're going to talk about them about, um, a bit uh, in detail. Uh, we do assessments, of course, border assessments, um, identity management assessments, identity for inf infrastructure assessments, and we also provide some technical assistance. Oh, I'm talking too fast, I think. Sorry. Here we go. Very good. This, this will. This was not planned. <laughs> this was not planned, trust me. But it was good. Now, we delivered training, last, as David was saying, uh, in August, beginning of August this year, together with IKO, uh, the validation training on security documents to immigration officers from Kenya, uh, Tanzania, and Uganda. This was the first uh, training uh, session together uh, between IKO and IOM, and we used both manuals. So at the time, we were developing in parallel to, to different manuals on security documents, and um, as you can see some, for some pictures we have here, we have here in the center the passport exam examination um, procedure manual, which is the blue book, and um, this is also another uh, joint um, operation we did, let's say, uh, together with IKO, which is IOM is preparing, uh, delivering basic trainings on security documents, delivering trainings of trainers, preparing, um, providing member states with uh, internal pool of trainers to deliver trainings on security documents. And uh, we were happy to announce that two of the, those uh, trainers that were trained by ACBC under PEPM, this manual, um, uh, training manual, were selected to be a qualified instructors in Arabic. 
those two gentlemen you see on the pictures from Sudan, uh, they are will, will be soon uh, qualify experts from IKEA on security documents and rubbing speaking. So also David mentioned some uh, how some activities we're doing together. Assessments is the picture on the, on uh, your left, and the training is a picture on the center, and then some some uh, trip participation from your side. Now a bit more in detail about uh, BEPM, we have a new book which is includes 12 chapters, and uh, we have. Uh, since paper to personalization, which is the first part, the first nine chapters, I'll say, and from chapter 10 to 12, we are talking about fraud. So we start with assessing the traveler, documents that are not genuine, and then examining um, documents for fraud. We'll go deeply on fraud. And at the end, we have a glossary of terms. This is more or less what we have, um, what I already mentioned, and New stuff that we introduced comparing with the previous PEPM, or the PEPM 1, is the electronic documents and biometrics, because at the time, 2007, there was uh, still no much information or available information about biometrics and uh, passports, so they were not included on the, on the first version. And of course, at the end of, um, of each, each um, chapter, we have a quiz about the, the, um, the chapter. So. Um, so far, we have uh, the PEPM being translated um, in Arabic, French, Azeri, Burmese, Portuguese, Turkish, and Ukrainian. We have, as well, uh, e-version. We can, as well, uh, flip it over. You don't have to print a book or bring your hard copy book. You have a e-version that you can use. And on your right side of the screen, you have some, uh, some uh, information about some organizations that are using PEPM as um, a training manual, namely the Norwegian ID Center and uh, the Canberra Institute of Technology from uh, Australia. Um, <clears throat> what else? We have uh, some training tools about, about uh, PEPM, on, on PEPM, sorry, uh, in English and French and Portuguese, of course. Some training gu guidelines for those who are not uh, familiar with, uh, with, um, with PEPM and can, will use and deliver the first training. We have a new version, as I already mentioned, um, and um, we will use an electronic platform about PEPM and that will be launched next year, so people can, uh, immigration office can have access, logged in, from their own country, from their own Im immigration uh, headquarters, let's say, and have access uh, to the, the training uh, platform. Um, this is included, this is also linked with facial recognition, which is something that um, IOM Tanzania, namely ACBC, is uh, assisting member states in Africa to implement uh, facial recognition systems. For example, the last one being in Kilimanjaro Airport. For those who are familiar with Tanzania, it's in the Kilimanjaro region, it's an international airport. Uh, the first one was in August 2016, and the, new, the next one will be in Dar es Salaam Airport in, 2000, uh, in uh, November uh, 2017. We also, uh, on breeder documents and civil registration database, we have as well uh, ID management workshops and where we can as well assist uh, member states on how to produce from the production to the issuance and verification or inspection of the document. Um, together with this, um, with, uh, with PEPM, and following the direct request of our member states, which is, for example, in Africa, uh, sometimes we don't have internet, or sometimes we have internet, but it's not so stable. So this was an issue, and the request from the member states was, can you come up with something that can operate and validate passports without the need of the internet? We thought about it, and yes, we come up with a solution. So. Everybody now has a, a smartphone, so smartphones are getting cheaper, and cheaper phones are getting smarter. So we combine all this, and we come up with an application. It can read, for example, machine-readable zone. It can read a QR, a QR uh, codes. Uh, IOM or ICBC is able to design a specific and unique uh, QR codes to be, to, be, to be used and verified by uh, any country or any organization, for example. Uh, the facial recognition, already mentioned this one. And finally, I would like to talk about the late, latest uh, publication of uh, ACBC, which is the Secondary Line Inspection Handbook, which is another specific request, increasingly coming from our member states in Africa, about the inspection system on the secondary inspection systems, how to organize roles and responsibilities, for example, um, design, infrastructure, equipment, and so on and so forth. So this is something that we also well happy to share and with our member states, together with the ICAO, and uh, hopefully we can move forward on the next uh, step, which is a joint cooperation, a more active cooperation in the field. Good. Thank you very much.
Thank you to our speakers for giving us an overview of uh, capacity building capabilities. Of course, uh, this involves training on how to use inspection systems and how to detect fraud documents on proper uh, processing of travelers as they, as they move uh, through uh, borders. And our uh, next speaker, uh, Mr. Uh, Sablux Horvath, uh, will be addressing actual fraud trends. So a little bit about him before uh, we invite him to the stage. Uh, since 2010, uh, Mr. Horvath has worked as coordinating officer at Air Border Sector in the Joint Operations Unit, Operations Division of Frontex, which is the European Border and Coast Guard Agency. I think he's going to give us a little bit more detail about, about Frontex uh, as he begins. Uh, right now, he's the Frontex Project Manager of the Interpol Frontex Joint Project of Reference Manual and Dial Duck. He has a background in police and frontier control, integrated border management, transnational criminal investigations, document fraud, asylum and refugees, and international cooperation. He holds a master's degree in international cooperation in public administration and EU studies from the University of Public Administration in Hungary, a postgraduate degree in economics and business administration, and a bachelor's degree from the Hungarian Police Academy. We invite him to the stage.